our first lesson, lesson one. And what we're going to be doing today is learning how to draw a basic flat. And we really need to know what the difference is between a flat and an illustration because we will be drawing both a flat and an illustration this year. On the day is drawing a basic flat and just the basic steps and how to do that. Let's talk about what a flat does. One of the first things we want to be able to do when we draw a flat is communicate information. And if we look at our drawings right here, here we have an illustration and here we have flats of the various parts of the um, outfit that are on the illustration over here. Now flats give us a lot more information. Um, here, when we're just looking at this illustration, we can't tell whether she's got a t-shirt on, a tank top, we don't know what the back looks like, there's a lot of information missing. Here it's very difficult to see where the actual shoulder seams are. When we look over here on the flats, we can see that it's about a three-quarter inch length sleeve, um, that it is very boxy, and so we can kind of get a feeling for that on the fit of her. Over here we can tell what her tank top looks like, and we now know it's a tank top, not a t-shirt, and we can have a little bit more detail about the, um, the full little shorts there. So these are flats. This is an illustration. So what we're looking at is shape and construction detail. That's going to be really important as we go through the semester and we learn about um, drawing. All right, so let's take a look about what flats are used for. Basically, the flats give us information on detail, on the shape of the fit. Is it loose? Is it tight? And how it's made, which is the construction. Now, when we, when we draw, we're going to use different size pens. And the pens that I've asked for you to purchase are two different thicknesses. Um, we've got an 05 and we have an 01. And one is a little skinnier and one is a little thicker in terms of the line weight. The line weight is very important. You can see those different lines here. Those different line weights. These are some flats and they're giving us a lot of information. Now, this is a little, like a little snugly fitted uh, crop top. What we're looking at here, this one is actually even more finely fitted. These little straight lines would indicate a dart. This one would indicate a construction seam. And this one indicates a, a little gathering going across the bust. Now we also can see the shape or the fit in this basic little t um, t tank top. Here we can see a fairly fitted tank top. Now can you see how much straighter this one is? And this one is much looser, and you can see that it's got the little flare on the bottom. We also can see detailing in a flat, and these are all things that you're going to show me when we do our first exercise. So here we can see a little bit of top stitching, a seam going down the middle. We can see little um, stitch lines, which are showed by a little dash line here. And we can also see more little stitch lines. Also, you can see the really pretty um, closely the difference in the outlines on this one. Very bold on the outside and a little fine pen on the inside. So that's the difference between our, our pen weights and also the difference in um, all the things that we're going to be showing in a flat. So let's go on a little bit more and let's talk about actually drawing a flat, the steps involved in drawing a flat. We're on page A6 in your syllabus here. And what we're going to do in steps for drawing a flat is we're going to use this tool that's called a croquis. And we have a tro croquis right here. And this croquis um, is what we're, what we're going to do with this croquis. We're going to take it and we're going to put it underneath our tracing paper. Now you've all purchased a pad of tracing paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this croquis, we're going to stick it under here like this. And you can see we can see through it. And when we can see through it, um, we're going to trace right on top of it. Now we're not immediately going to go to our pen. What we're going to do is we are going to use our mechanical pencil. And the steps involved in um, drawing our croquis. First we've got to place our croquis underneath the tracing paper, which we just did. Now we've got to look at the drawing that we're going to be drawing here. And let me move it down a little bit. This is a, a picture or a photograph of a t-shirt. This is what we're going to be drawing. This is a flat of the t-shirt. And so we really need to look at different details. Does our t-shirt have a little band on it? Is it a v-neck? Where are our shoulder seams? Those are the kinds of things that we need to observe about the garment that we're drawing. And um, the, the another thing that we want to do is we want to keep this t-shirt this as 
symmetrical as possible. Now when we draw our t-shirt on our the computer, you'll love it because you only have to draw half and the computer replicates the other half and it's exactly identical. And I'll give you a few tips for doing that uh, when we um, draw it by hand also. So let's start out uh, drawing our, our t-shirt. So I always start with the neckline. So I'm going to come up here and it's not a real deep neckline. It's kind of a medium neckline. And I'm going to draw the front of my t-shirt right about right there. And I'm going to draw my shoulder seams, which are right here. And I've got to look, it looks like my shoulder seams are coming out just about a little bit farther out on the arm. So I'm going to curve that like this. And I'm going to look at the fit of it. This looks pretty straight. So I'm not going to follow the curve of my waistline here. I'm going to bring this down fairly straight and bring it down fairly straight. And then I have to decide how long it is. This one looks like it's a little bit longer than, oh, it's probably about down to the hip level. Now, if I bring this straight down, I'm going to go inside my croaky. Can you see that? So I didn't quite get my line quite right on this one. So I'm going to erase it with my little eraser. And I'm going to bring it down so that it is more out like that. And I'm they're located about where this dotted line. I'm just going to give it a little bit of curve. Now the other thing I need is I need some sleeves on it. So I'm going to put a little rounded cap on it. I've got to look at it. How long of a sleeve is this? This one is actually a little bit shorter style-wise than this one. And I'm drawing this one up here. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to curve it a little bit like that. And I'm going to bring it right up to the armpit. Now let me take my croquis out because I've got a pretty good outline. I think it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing. You can see I need to continue my shoulder seam over here. And here's my other shoulder seam. Now how am I going to get that sleeve to look exactly the same? Well, it's kind of tough. There's a couple of different things you can do when you're um, doing a um, flat by hand. And something that I really like to do is I like to fold it. And that way I can see right through it. Now, if I fold it over like this, right down the center line, like this, I can see my t-shirt underneath it. And I can see where my sleeve is. So if I come over here and I draw my other sleeve like this, there we go, then I've got my t-shirt looks very, very symmetrical. It's exactly the same. And it, you've got to be sure you fold it right down that center seam. Sometimes I'll mark that center seam first. Now that's a really basic outline of a, of a t-shirt. Now an, a, something that all t-shirts have is they have a back neckline. Now if you were to take a picture a garment laying on your bed, if you lay it out, um, your back neckline is a little bit higher than your front neckline. So I'm going to draw my back neckline up here. And I'm actually not happy with that front neckline, so I'm going to erase it. I'm going to draw my front line just a little bit longer, like that. And I'm going to draw my back neckline right like... Oh, I don't like that either. Hold on. I'm going to put my croaky back underneath take a look at it. I think I got it quite low enough. I'm going to go like here. Oh, I didn't. That was a problem. All right, so I'm going to bring my neckline down about like this. You see how I brought it down? Now that my back neckline is going to be up here. Take that out. Now, I want to draw a little band, draw a little bit of detail like this. Maybe I want to show a little top stitching on it. I can top stitch on my hem. Maybe I've got a little top stitching on the lower part of my sleeve. And I look pretty good. Now that is the front of my flat. Now I also want you to draw a back flat. So how am I going to get my back flat exactly the same as this? Well what I can do is I can just trace it. And the silhouette is going to be the same. So if I come on this side and there's my upper neckline which is my back neckline. My sleeves are going to be exactly the same. Now because my front is lower than my back, I can't see my back. I mean I can't see my front. This is all the same. This way I get it exactly the same length. The top stitching goes all the way around and it goes all the way around my sleeve so it's on the back of my sleeve. And that band also goes all the way around. So this is my t-shirt back. 
and you can see I have a pretty well balanced. Now sometimes when you're doing this, like see this shoulder does not look that great. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. And you can see that this sleeve doesn't look very good. So I'm just going to doctor that up a little. Oops, on the other side. Because I traced it. So I'm just going to bring this in a little bit. There's my sleeve seam, and I think I'm going to do the same thing over here. Don't be afraid to erase. I erase all the time. And I'm pretty good to go. And there's my front and my back. This is my back, and this is my front. They look pretty clean. So now, the next thing that I need to do is I need to trace them in ink. Now it's much easier and better, since we have a graphite on both sides of the paper because we've been folding it and unfolding it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I am going to slip it underneath my tracing, another fresh sheet of paper, tracing paper, and I'm going to trace it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to use my heavier pen, because it's all outlined, and I think I'll start up here like this. But don't be afraid to turn it so it's easier. I draw, I'm right-handed, and I draw really easily from left to right. So if I find myself not being able to draw easily from left to right, I can rotate my... I'm going to try and get really even, even corners. See, I've got it all planned out underneath. Try and keep your strokes as even as you can. There's my hem. And I've got my back neckline right here. And there's my front neckline. Now I'm going to get my smaller pen and I'm going to do a little bit of detail on it. So I'm going to show this neck band right here with my skinnier pen. Try to keep it as even as I can. To give it a little bit of top stitching down here. At the hemline. A bit of top stitching over here. And I, this band actually continues all the way around. So there's the back of my band on the back of my t shirt. And I'm pretty finished with my front. So now what I can do is let me go ahead and do that same thing to my back and my first drawing will be done. So again, I'm going to trace it with the back heavier of my two pens. There's my sleeve. Oop, get my little corner. There's my back. There's my other sleeve. Doing this a little quickly, yours will be a little bit neater than mine. And now I've got to get my smaller pen out. And there's my band of my neckline. My top stitching. See how this kind of came out kind of curly looking? That didn't get a very good. There we go. And I'm finished. So now what I've just shown you is how to draw a front flat and a back flat, and how to do your ink work on it, and that's all you do. So what are you going to turn into me? Let's take a look at that. You have some homework. I want you to find some pictures on the internet, and the pictures that I want you to find are... Okay, so let's take a look at what you are going to collect for your homework, and what I want you to do is find some pictures that you want to draw, and the best sites to go to are pattern sites on the internet. And if you look at your homework here, um, I want you to find 10 t-shirts to draw. You won't be able to draw all of them. Um, but the thing is, they have to be basic pull-on tops. They can't have a collar, they can't have zippers, they can't have buttons. They've got to be basic pull-on tops. And you've got to really clearly show the construction details. Uh, I don't want little pictures, I don't want pictures that are in black because you can't see the seams. Um, I want you to really be able to see what you're drawing. Mm.
do this assignment, you're going to need tracing paper, you're going to need your mechanical pencil, you're going to need your black felt markers. Now these are some good sites to go to. Butterick has a great site, uh, McCall's has a great site, Vogue Patterns has a great site. And I went to McCall's to see what I could find. And these were some of the patterns that I found at McCall's. And if we're looking at it here, this is a picture of the garment, and these are flats. Now look how great these flats are. What you'll do with these is you will take these and you will put them on your croquis, and you will draw them exactly as you see them. Now one of the things you'll notice, some have sleeves, some don't have sleeves, um, they've got detailing, they have a back neckline. Now some of the pattern companies do not show the back neckline, and if you get a uh, flat that's drawn like that, I want you to draw that back back neckline. This one is very similar to the one I demonstrated, only it's got a little bit of a V neckline. You can see the top stitching on the hem and the edge of the sleeves, etc. Um, we've got some long sleeves down here, it's basically a big boat neckline here with the long sleeves and the top stitching, um, etc. So that is what I want you to do. Is I want you to find some things that you want to draw. Now here's another one. This one has a raglan sleeve, and a raglan sleeve the sleeve goes all the way up to the neckline. And it's, this is nice because you can really see that they've done it in different colors. But again, here you can see the front and the front. Zoom in so you can see it. The front is a little lower than the back. There's your band, there's your back. You can see the curve of the shoulders. This is have a little cuff on it. But again, there's no zippers, there's no buttons. It's just a pull on top, which is what I want. And we'll do all of that. We'll do the zippers and we'll do the all the fancy ruffles and all of that, but we're going to start out really, really, really slow. Now, sometimes they'll show a little bit more detail like you can see here, because this has a little lace overlay, so they've shown a little scallopy edge here, and that is actually what is in the photograph here. Uh, not showing up very well on the camera, though. Um, if you want to, you can show more detail. For instance, you can show you know, like a little bit of embellishment, um, but you don't have to. If you are really artistic and you want to do that, you can. And then here's a third one that I pulled off of the internet, and this has got some flat. Your basic flat looks like, I mean, your illustration looks like this. Kind of hard to see um, because it's buried in, in uh, detail, and the pattern is very, very busy. So the flats tell the big story. Now here you can see this has got the little short scallop lace overlay on your blouse. Here you can see that the basic top is just really straight across. Little tiny cap sleeves, different than the t-shirt sleeves. And you can see this one down here doesn't have a separate sleeve at all. Can you see how it doesn't have a seam in there? So what you're going to do for me when you turn these in is I want to see these drawings. So after you decide which ones you're going to draw, so this is what you're going to actually turn into. You're going to draw a t-shirt. And I'm back on A3. And you're going to draw a t-shirt and the croquis provided. I have a front view of the croquis and I have a back view of the croquis. If you want to just flip your t-shirt over to draw your black view, that works just great too. Now, let's talk about what's going to be in these drawings. Your finished drawings are not going to include the croquis. Now, you saw when I did my demonstration that I, as soon as I could, I pulled that croquis out of there. So there's no croquis, there's no figure in these, they're just the flats. I want your t-shirts so the front and back views are together. So here's my front view, here's my back view. And I do want your finished drawings traced in black felt tent pen. And then I do want your inspiration pictures on one piece of paper with your drawings. So here, and you, so you've got to number everything. So here's my t-shirt number one, front and back. And here's my inspiration for t-shirt number one. Here's my, my pull on top number two, front and back. And then here is my illustration for my inspiration for my flat. And so it's really important that you number them so I can match them up. Otherwise, it's really hard for me to um, match them up. So let's look at how I'm going to grade this. You should have four front and four back views. So you have four different t-shirts, 
you'll have a total of eight drawings, four fronts and four backs. Things that I'm going to be looking at is does it fit the croquis? How's your line quality? Um, you saw some of my lines, I had to go back and join them together in the felt tip. Is your back neckline showing? Do your details match your inspiration pictures? Okay, if it's got top stitching, do you have top stitching? Um, if you've got a cap sleeve, does your inspiration picture have a cap sleeve? And then 10 points for overall quality. You know, how much care did you take with it? And this first assignment is worth 45 points. And um, that's it. So when you um, come to class next time, you will turn it in to me. And, and I'll be seeing you next week. And that concludes lesson number one.